her lille baby. truck repaired. I made a video on that. A little hiccup in life, but got through it. Doing the mechanics myself saved me, from what I read, thousands. And I was able to get a used part for $250 compared to over $1,000 for a new one, if I'm not mistaken. Truck seems to be doing great now. Very happy. It was a transfer case. been changed for a while but now they're 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 fully changed I believe now now we're to the point to where they're just falling I believe okay uh, me and Carter are out here again um, doing another delivery here he stayed with me throughout the day but then uh, I came home before I delivered this load of wood and he ended up uh, my other kids were outside playing and he wanted to stay so he stayed home and I, I went and delivered it by myself. And me and the man that I delivered the wood to, I've been delivering to him since I started. So this makes the fourth year and I've done other work for him as well. I've done, uh, he had this big greenhouse. I cleaned it out for him. And now he's talking about wanting to move the greenhouse to his, where he currently lives. He owns another property kind of close to me and he's wanting to move it to where he lives, which is about 20 minutes from me. That way he can be closer to it and everything. But He's a very friendly man. I've been delivering wood to him, as I said, since I started. Uh, I remember uh, out of nowhere, him, I think him and his wife got it for me. They found. I told him about how I was having a baby, and he just, uh, I didn't ask him for it or anything or say I need anything. He just uh, came and gave me a bag one day, and it had a bunch of baby stuff in it. And uh, I was so thankful for that. I mean, he didn't have to do it. The man was just a friendly man, somebody that loves to give, a cheerful giver. Something the Bible says God loves is a cheerful giver. And my wife was happy with it. I think it had some, like, bibs and maybe some pacifiers and maybe shampoo and all that. I mean, it was just so friendly of them to do that. I meet people like that now and then. It seems like it's getting more and more rare where you find those people that are just legitimately... They like to do good just because they enjoy doing it. There's a scripture in the Bible, and uh, you, you'll you see it here at the beginning of this video. You did see it if you're to this point. And it says it's more blessed to give than to receive or something of that nature, and it truly is. It's a blessing to give to somebody else rather than to, uh, to just receive all the time. And uh, I think it's important, too, when you do good things, it's good to shine a light to, to do good things and other people see you doing good. But but we're also, I don't believe that we should ever do things just to be seen of men. I do believe other some certain people do that more for their reputation than they do for the pleasure of actually knowing they're helping somebody else. I think there's a there's a big difference in that. I was talking a while back about how me and Carter had passed this woman who was sitting with a blanket around her and she was sitting on the side of the road and something that I encouraged me a whole lot and I was very happy to see is as I came back from delivering that load of wood, she was still sitting there and a man had stopped and was talking to her. I was very happy to see that. There are good people in this world. I think we maybe have one to two pieces of the white oak now. If you want a good Axeman hoodie, the link will be in the description now, laddie. Good Axeman hoodie. You can change the color. Get a size bigger than what you normally wear if you want one. Hey, I said this the other day, too, that I didn't try to highlight my uh, channel with this hoodie. And I'm not trying to say anything against people that have their channel name at all. I was just saying I wasn't personally trying to do that 
because uh, bluegrass outdoors wouldn't suit quite a few people, you know, people in other states and stuff wearing that. Which, I, But I wasn't at all trying to say that I had anything against, uh, I guess you call them content creators, people that have YouTube channels who uh, advertise their channel on, because a lot of people do that. So I hope nobody took offense to that. I wasn't at all trying to say anything like that. I'm not at all trying to say anything to offend anybody, period. Even with the chopping block the other day, that's just my opinion on it. Maybe sometimes I'm a little too opinionated with things. I was just trying to show an example. And uh, arguing is never a good thing, I don't believe. It doesn't solve anything. Uh, even the Bible talks about not doing that, not arguing. But I believe there is a way to kind of debate things the right way too. But once you see it's not getting anywhere with people, and I'm not I'm not necessarily talking about things that like a chopping block either. I guess that's an example, but... That's something that people either prefer or they don't. That's that's their own preference, you know. But there's other things that are just facts, and uh, there's a right way and a wrong way to talk about it. And I, I feel like if you if you're trying to, you can tell if you're talking to somebody if they're going if they want to hear, you know, if they're if they're reasonable, I guess. And and, and like me, if somebody's telling me something and I'm in the wrong, because I have been many times with things, and I've learned. Uh, I've learned a lot from other people explaining things to me the way I've done things wrong and stuff. And I've still got a lot of learning to do in things, but there's a scripture in the Bible that says, if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. And I believe what that means is when a man gets to the place where he thinks he knows it all, it's he, he, doesn't know, he doesn't know things the way that he should because God doesn't want us to have that mindset. We can always learn more things. It's good to be confident in what you do know, what you know to be true. It's good to be confident in that. But I don't think it's good to be to the mindset to where you think you can't grow and you think you can't learn because we can always learn. We can always grow. There's another scripture in there. I love the Bible scriptures, but it says silver hair does not an elder make. And what that means is age doesn't necessarily make you wise. Wisdom comes from God. True wisdom does. Um, well, there is earthly wisdom as well, you know, about things here on earth. But there's spiritual wisdom as well. And that comes from God. And uh, one example of that is back in the Bible, Daniel. In the Bible, he was a young man. And a king had a dream, and nobody could tell him the meaning of that dream. And the king was going to end up, I think, killing all of these. I can't remember what they called them. Uh, they were supposed to be men that worked for the king that could tell him the meaning of all that, all his dreams and all that. And none of them could. It was from God. And God had a plan with it. He wanted Daniel to discern that dream. And uh, Daniel was a young man. He was, he was just a young man. I don't know if he was a teenager in his early 20s or what, but it, the Bible described him as a young man. And uh, he asked one of the guards if he could go and talk to the king because he had a dream, and in that dream, God revealed to him what the, what the king's dream meant. And he went and told the king everything that, uh, that he had dreamed about and told him the meaning of it, and the king knew he was telling the truth. He even told him, the, told him what he had dreamed, and that's from God. And because of that, uh, it changed everything for Daniel in a big way. But what I'm trying to say with that silver hair does not an elder make. I've met a lot of people. I've got some a lot of silver hair at a young age. I'm 30. I'll be 31 in February. But I've met a lot of people that's in, older in years, maybe up in their 60s and 70s, who don't necessarily have a lot of wisdom. And then I've met some people that's in their, even in their 20s that for their age I feel like are have quite a bit of wisdom, which of course you can grow throughout the years, everybody, I believe. But... um I know I'm rambling a little bit. I like to talk about things like that. I, I love what I believe to be the truth, and that's the Word of God. And it's so many good scriptures in there. That's why I like posting them on my videos, because I believe with all my heart that's the truth. And I believe uh, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the truth. And it says Jesus Christ is the same today, the same yesterday, and the same forever. So that tells you the truth does not change. It's the same today, the same yesterday, and the same forever. So... I like to I like to learn about that. I think it's good for a man to learn about that. Sometimes uh, people can go their whole lives without really learning about the truth and die not really knowing about it. And it's not because they can't learn about it. It's because they just choose not to, really. It's for whosoever will, the Bible says. The, 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 the Word of God and the truth and salvation, heaven, it's for whosoever will. It's for whosoever is willing. That's what the Bible says. Whosoever will, let, let them come. It's for whosoever will. The only thing is a lot of times we put things above God and uh, we choose them things rather than him. Me, myself, I've done that many times. Many times have I put things before God and failed God. 
but he is good and his way is perfect. And I like to learn about it. I like to talk about it. The main thing, though, is to live by it. That's the main thing is to live by the word of God. The Bible says, but be ye doers of the word, doers, and not just hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If we just hear about the truth and, and we don't live it, we're deceiving our own selves if we think we're Christians or, or if we think we're okay like that. But you've got to be doers. But after all that rambling, let's get to some hand splitting here. <laughs> got quite a few rounds here. I've got some, as I said, red oak, white oak, and poplar. You going to split it, Carter? Yeah. Hey, he'll have a boy's axe maybe soon. Somebody from the channel, uh, Gary McNeely. I think I'm pronouncing that name right. McNeely. Uh, Nelly, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, Gary, but uh, he's supposed to bring Carter a boy's axe and bring me an, uh, an old double bit and single bit. I'm very excited about that. Around Thanksgiving, I'm supposed to meet that man. I'm ready. That's just, that just means so much, a man that doesn't even know me offering that. I think he said he knew I'd put him to get good use, and I sure will, Gary. I sure will. I'll put him to good use. Lord willing, as long as I'm able and I've got my health and everything, I'll put him to good use. Sure to appreciate everybody that's uh, tuning in, the attention that that uh, seems to have uh, have got. Uh, it's from a guy in Kentucky splitting firewood. Not a whole lot of attention by no means compared to these channels. I think I got a little over 300 subscribers now. I'm very thankful for that. But I did. I thought that would maybe take me over a year to ever get that amount of subscribers. I've been on there now. I think a little over two months. So I'm very happy with the progress it's made. Very happy to see that people are interested in this content. And I want to do my very best not only to uh, provide good content, but, but provide, uh, provide uh, not, just, not just content that shows maybe firewood that you enjoy, but also content that gives a good example of how I think somebody should be. I'm going to try my best to do that. And, and uh, honestly, whenever I know that other people are paying attention at all to me it makes me want to strive that much more to do good jesus said let your light so shine before men you can't he's the light and once he dwells in you you can let that light shine but if you don't got him you don't have a light to shine so i've got to get to a place really myself to where i can shine a light but i want to do my very best to be positive and show good content and and uh, not cuss or anything like that everybody has their own freedoms to do what they want on their channels but me i don't want to i don't want to cuss i don't want my kids hearing cussing Somewhere in the Bible it says, uh, be, be ye wise unto that which is good and simple unto that which is evil. And what that means is study upon the good things, learn about them. But the evil things, be simple-minded is what it's saying. Don't, don't try to learn about them things. Don't try to expose yourself to them things. Uh, think on the good things. It talks about that as well in there. Think on good things. I'll, I'll add that scripture in this, in this uh, video, actually. It's a beautiful scripture. So many, so many times I'm out working or something and scriptures will come to my mind that I've read in the Word of God. And there's so much wisdom in them, so much good. And it's so fascinating how that, that's been here for so long. And uh, I believe you should go by your experiences that you have in life as well. But I can say this without a shadow of a doubt. Um, through faith in God, through uh, as my faith grew, and I had experiences from that. And I think sometimes lack of faith can keep us from experiences. I, I, I truly do. And the Bible agrees with that as well. It says, They that come to God must first believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. You, you've got to have faith in God before you can even come to Him. You've got to, you've got to believe in Him, and, and it's for whosoever will. And uh, I like to talk about it, though. It's good. It's true. It'll stand the test of time. It's, it's wisdom in it. Everything in the Bible is good. It doesn't tell you to do anything bad. Everything it tells you to do in there is good. It's, it's, to, it's for the help of other people. Jesus himself, it said, came not to uh, to be served, but to serve. He came to serve. He was the son of God, and he humbled. He took on himself the form of a servant. He served other men. That's all he did with his life, and then he died for us. So I'm thankful for that. I believe in that. I know it's real. I've felt that spirit before. It's something you can feel for yourself if you seek it out. But if we don't seek it out, we'll, we'll never find it. It's something you've got to seek out for yourself. And it's something you can feel. I don't believe in the Word of God because of uh, because somebody told me to my whole life. No, it takes more than that for me. Of course, I, I, that helps, of course. But uh, I believe because of I went to him one day praying at an altar, and sure enough, I, I felt something before I stood to my feet. I felt the Spirit of God, and it was amazing. 
I was in my early 20s, so it's really not even been that long ago. Heard about God my whole life, but never felt it. I heard about other people feeling it. But when I felt his spirit for myself, uh, you know, the Bible talks about love and what ch charity is what the Bible calls love. You read about what that means sometimes, and uh, you feel it when you feel the spirit of God. The Bible says God is love. When you feel his spirit, you feel love. There's nothing like it. Never felt nothing like it in my life. Nothing compared. Whenever I felt it, it broke me down, made me ball like a baby. I didn't care who seen me at that point. I was so shy to even go and pray. I was in a little church. First time I've been there for years. And uh felt like praying. I just felt like it out of nowhere. There was a preacher there preaching, and I think he said something to the nature. He said, if you've got pain, if you've got trouble, if you've got sorrow, all these things. I had all that at the time. It was before I got married, had my children. And uh, I just got a DUI, I think. Hit another vehicle. Thank goodness it didn't hurt nobody bad. Don't even remember getting in the vehicle. Shortly after that, I woke up in jail. Don't remember getting it, going to jail. I let, They let me out the next morning. I, I left out there drunk, walking around drunk, around not even knowing where I was going, really. Just in bad shape. And uh, in my early 20s, before I had my ch any of my children or was married, and just going down a, a bad path. And I had an aunt come to me, and uh, this aunt, I'd, I'd seen a change in her. Uh, she she got saved. She she gave her heart to God, and 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 when you truly do that, you get saved. When you truly give your heart to Him, and that's what she did. And I seen the change in her. I seen a woman who was a drug addict at one time, who was doing all kinds of things that you shouldn't be doing, and 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 I seen her completely changed. A new creature is what the Bible said you'll be when you when you uh, become born again. That's why it calls born again, born of the water and of the Spirit. But she came to me one day, and she was she pulled up in the driveway out of nowhere shortly after all that happened. And she said, uh, why don't you go to church with me, Dylan? And she said, I really want you to go. And I kept telling her no. I said, I might go next week, Mary. I had no desire to go to church whatsoever. I kept saying no. She started crying all of a sudden. She said, Dylan, I've I've only had a, a feeling like this one time in my life. She said, I have a bad feeling something's going to happen to you. She said, I've only had a feeling like that one time in my life. And she said, when I did it, something bad happened. She was crying, and, I, and it scared me when she said that because I believe in God, and I believe he can use his people, and he does use his people to help other people. And uh, so I told her, I said, well, let me go in. Let me get changed. I'll go with you. I went in, changed, went to church, sat in the back by myself, felt so out of place. I mean, I felt awkward. I wasn't, didn't have my wife at the time, didn't have no kids. I was just completely by myself, and everybody else was up in the front, and I sat back there by myself. And the preacher started preaching. said something to nature. He said, uh, if you've got pain, if you've got uh, sorrow, if you've got hurt, he, he mentioned a bunch of different things. And he said, uh, come up here to altar and pray. He said, God can help you with it. And I, I remember sitting back there and uh, I was so, it was like a battle was going on in my head. I remember it, I remember it good. And, uh, and that's what it is. The Bible talks about how we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities, with spiritual wickedness in high places. The rulers of the darkness of this world, things things of that nature is what it says we wrestle with. And and it also says when you when you go to do good, evil is present. And uh, going up there to pray, the way that God was drawing me was a good thing. But evil made itself present. I believe in another spirit as well. I believe in the devil. I believe in Satan. I believe he's real and he has power. And I've noticed that to be true. Anytime I've went to do good in my life, truly do good, he's made himself present and tried to give me reasons not to. That's exactly what happened. I remember sitting back there on that altar, or sitting back there on that pew wanting to go to that altar. And uh, after the preacher said all of that, and I remember thinking to myself, I need to go up there and pray. I feel like praying. It was such, it was such a strong urge. I mean, and there's a scripture in there. It said, uh, uh, Jesus said, none cometh unto me except my Father who sent me draws him. And uh, that's the only way you can come to God. Sometimes God will draw men and they'll push it away again and again and again. And we're never guaranteed for him to keep doing that with us. But he was drawing me that day without a shadow of a doubt. But there was an enemy there uh, fighting me. Evil was present, and it, he was trying to keep me from going up there. I remember thoughts coming to my head, like, well, you've done made it here. That's good enough. But then there was something else coming that was saying, no, go, you need to go pray. You need to go pray. And then there, there, was, there it was again, well, you've, if you go up there, these people are going to think you're just trying to be seen if you go up there and pray at that altar. They're going to think you're just trying to be seen. God knew exactly what was going on in my head. He knew exactly. He knows all that. And I watched that preacher step down uh, off of the pulpit, they call it, in church. I watched him step down from there and with tears in his eyes. I didn't even know the man. I know Now I know him. He's a man of God without a shadow of a doubt. 
uh, he walked back there to me with tears in his eyes and uh, bent down, put his arm on the pew behind me and looked me eye to eye. And he said, uh, the Lord told me he's been striving with you. He said, do you, do you want to feel him? And I, I just shook my head, yeah. I didn't even know him really. And uh, he said, come up here to the altar and pray. So I did. And uh, I didn't really even know how to pray. I just went up there and got down and prayed and said everything I could think to say. One of the last things I remember saying, I was about to stand up to my feet. I'd said all I could think to say. And uh, I was shy anyways. It was in my mind. These people was looking at me and all this stuff. But uh, one of the last things I said, I said, Lord, I've always believed in you. I, and, and I felt like I had faith, you know, to a certain extent in God. I believed in him. So why have I never got to feel you? At that point, I was about to stand up. And before I could stand to my feet, I had my hands like this right here on my head. Before I could stand to my feet, both of them started shaking. And I, and this is God's honest truth. Both of them started shaking. And it surprised me so much, I pulled them away and looked at them. And when I looked at them, they were shaking like that. And uh, that ain't even the most amazing part. After that, it was like I was just covered up in the spirit of God. I, mean, I don't know how to describe it really. You can't, you've got to fill up for yourself. But I was covered up in something that took away all fear. It took away all doubt. It took away all the pain, everything, the sorrow, all the things that preacher said that God could help me with. It took it all away all at once. And I started bawling like a baby. And I didn't care who seen me at that point. Didn't care. It was like it was me and, and, and the Lord at that moment. And I didn't care who seen me. And I was bawling like a baby, and all I could think to say, I just kept saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all I could think to say. And they, at, at the end of church, they asked me to speak on it. They call it testifying. They said, I didn't even know what that meant at the time. They, they just told me to talk about what I'd felt. And I said, I said, I've never felt nothing like that in my life. It was amazing. I haven't looked at life the same since. God's real. He is. I ain't trying to preach to you. I'm just telling you, he's been good to me. And I know... Like I've heard uh, it said people before, well, go with what you experience. Well, that's an experience I had with God, and it's changed my life ever since. And I'll never doubt it. I'll never doubt it. He gave that to me personally. He's got it for you personally. He's got it for whosoever will is what the Bible says. Whosoever will. But the thing is, even after me feeling that, it'll take me living right uh, to make it to heaven. Me, me uh, knowing what I need to do and not doing it, that's sin to me. I won't make it that way. I've got a lot of changing to do. I'm very thankful, but God's been good to me and my family. Far better than I feel like I deserve. I like to talk about him. I like to tell other people about him. He's good. Anyways, let's get to hand splitting. <laughs> I know I talked about before trying to make these videos not so long, but uh, the only way I really see to do that, I already speed the bucking up whenever I'm bucking the wood with a saw. I already speed that up. I speed up the loading. And uh, I really didn't want to speed up the hand splitting because that's what that's what I like to. And I enjoy watching myself, and I know some people enjoy watching bucking more. And there are times that I leave it regular speed as well. But there's I sometimes I, about I have to do something in order to keep it at, uh, a certain length and under a certain time. I mean, these videos can get so long. I mean, a lot of times when I come home, I think I've got two and a half, three hours of footage or something like that. I probably even had more than that before. And then uh, I go through and I'll edit the video, um, take out what I don't want, keep in what I want. And then the very last thing I do is, usually is uh, add in this audio that I'm doing right now. And so right now I'm in my little girl's room. All Everybody's laying down. I think my boys are sleeping. My wife's laying down with my little girl. My wife's probably awake in our room and my little girl is asleep and my, my youngest that is and my other little girl she's in here with me she's staying up with me she likes to uh stay up with me sometimes and i like having her for company so i let her every now and then she just turned five and uh she's playing her tablet while i'm recording this but uh here is mainly red white and uh, red and white oak and then some poplar but uh there's quite a bit of white oak here, too, if I'm not mistaken. That piece right there was very knotted. I mean, I got down to pretty much just knots on it. And uh, every now and then you'll have those that were pretty much just a big chunk like that. Is it's knots. I mean, and it's tough, too, especially when it's a hardwood like oak or something like that. I mean, now you can just bounce your axe off it all you want to, but 
every now and then I, I'm able to go in between those knots. But this one here, it was just, I think it was just knotted all around. There's the new hoodie as well. I was trying to advertise it a little bit. <laughs> it really wasn't cold enough to even be wearing a hoodie. It was probably around 65 degrees, 70 even maybe. It was actually, it felt good. It felt really good. I didn't need the hoodie at all. It's very comfortable though. I do like it. I plan to probably hand wash it though. I'm afraid that and uh, hang it up outside or something when I do get it really dirty because I'm just afraid it's going to shrink and it's not going to fit me. I wear XL normally, but uh, this this particular hoodie, I, I was reading the reviews before I even ordered one myself of the company that makes them. And uh, it's my logo on it, but it's a company that makes the, the product. So they put your logo on their product. And what it is is when I sell it, I've got a video on it already, but uh, when I sell it or... Uh, I get a portion of the sale and they do as well because they're pretty much doing all the work. All I did, did really was made a logo, but I still get a portion of every sale. So I'm pretty satisfied with that for now. Later on, I may end up getting me a machine or something where I can just make my own and get full profit out of it. But they did a really good job. I'm happy with the way it turned out. I want to stress too that I'm not, uh, I don't consider myself a Christian. I have, that, that's my faith. I believe that the Christian way, but I, I think that a Christian is a doer of the Word of God, a doer of the truth and what God commands you to do. That's what I believe a Christian is. Somebody like me who doesn't do it and who just knows about it, the Bible talks about people like that and it says, better never to have come to the knowledge of the truth than to know it and turn from it. And that's exactly what I've done. It had been better for me never to have known the truth than to turn from it the way that I have. And there's no excuse for me. Nobody's fault but my own. I don't, I don't ever want to offend nobody, but if God offends you, you won't like my channel very much. And really, I feel unworthy to even talk about him because I ain't a place to where I should be. But he's worthy of all praise either way. I'm thankful. Yep. I intend to, to get back to where I need to be with God, and that's my goal. I've got a lot of work to do. But it's, it's always in the back of my head, and that's why you hear me talk about it. Sometimes I think about when my brother used to go with me and uh, help, me, help me hand split and stuff. Uh -huh. Sometimes I would uh, buck the wood, and he would hand split it while I was doing that. And then once I got done bucking, I would uh, help him. And sometimes while I was hand splitting, he would go ahead and load it. And uh, it, was a, it was a huge help having him. I'm I'm used to doing it myself as well though, and you know having Carter there with me too. But he's mainly more company right now. But he's he is it does help a lot with the unloading and the loading. But the unloading really helps because I don't have to get up in the truck and do it like today when I went. I ended up having to get up in the truck and uh, what I do is kind of just stack it on the tailgate, bring it back to the tailgate, then jump down and get off the tailgate and stack it. So it's definitely. Uh, harder without him because normally he, he brings it to the tailgate for me and that's a huge help it really is but as i said he wanted to stay with his little brother and sister and then his other sister a day too so i i just went ahead and delivered it myself it's been cooling down quite a bit here in kentucky i'm guessing all over the place you know it probably has we've we, we've got down to freezing quite a few different times now and uh Something I, I want to be prepared for it this year in case the electric goes out. I think it was last year or the year before one, we had a we had a bad ice storm and there was a, it left a lot of people without electric. Ours went out for I think three days, and it came back on for not even a full day, and then that night went off again for another three days. And man, out here where we live, I remember walking outside and it was snow and ice all over the place, and it's kind of we live out in the kind of in the surrounded by woods. And uh, where the electric was out, whenever I walked out at nighttime, it was pretty much pitch black. I mean, it was pretty scary, really, looking around and not being able to see anything. And just how cold it was and everything, it was kind of odd seeing that, really. Not something I'm really used to. Usually there's at least a pole light or something at nighttime. We've got one pole light outside here, but, I mean, there was nothing. The neighbors' lights were off and everything. 
And uh, so it's very good to be prepared for the winter just in case have some sort of backup heat, whether it's propane or natural gas or firewood, which is my preference. But whatever it may be, you know, just have some sort of backup for the winter. I really enjoy uh, working with firewood a whole lot myself. Pretty sleepy right now. Again, it's getting late again. Uh, I don't. Uh, today's Sunday. I don't. I really don't like to work on Sundays myself, honestly. Um, I do every now and then, but I, I, I really, I, I try to, I try not to. It's a, I, I, it's a rest day, and so I try to, try to rest on it, usually. But I had got behind on the firewood because of my truck, it going down on me, and that just happened out of nowhere too. Which it had been making a sound for a while. I noticed when I put it in four wheel drive, it started making, randomly, it would just pop really loud. And uh, it, it left me and Carter stranded the other day for a moment, just right down the road from home. But uh, I kept messing with it and was able to get it in four-wheel drive low, as I, I think I mentioned that earlier in this video. And uh, I got it home, got the part and put it on. It, it took a while to do, though. It wasn't, it wasn't an easy job. It would have been much easier if I would have had some sort of lift or something like those guys got in the garages, but I've never, I'm used to working on them in a, in a driveway or something or in the grass. That's how I've done it pretty much every time I've worked on them. Really, I think I, every time I've worked on them, that's how I've done it. So my mowers as well, I try to work on my own zero turns. And part of the reason why is I've had bad experiences with taking them to mechanics. I, I there's an Ace Hardware here kind of close and and the people there are very friendly and everything, and they stay busy. But they've got a, they've got a place there uh, to where they repair uh, small engines and stuff. And uh, I've just not had the best experience going there. I, I took a saw to them one time, and uh, I think they had it for like two or three weeks. And when I called to check on it, they hadn't even touched it. And so I just went and picked it up. I don't think I've taken anything to them since, and don't intend to. And as far as vehicles go, I'm even less trustworthy i mean i trust people not that i'm less trustworthy i trust people even less when it comes to them working on my vehicles because i've had bad experiences with that too and probably for the last pretty much shortly after i became a man really i was probably 22 or something 23 something of that nature uh maybe not even it's maybe not been that long really I know for the past five to seven years or so, I've not, I don't think I've went to a mechanic at all, except for one that I knew personally, who was the guy that helped me put the engine in my truck after I blew the first one up from a bad radiator. So, um, he was a really friendly man. He's died. He died last year, I believe. Very friendly guy. Loved to help people. He helped me a lot. He was almost like an uncle to me and didn't even really know me. The man went out of his way to help me more than once. And you know, I'd help him too if if he ever needed. It's usually me, the one that was in the bind, though. <laughs> but uh, there was more than once he pulled me in, uh, pulled my truck in after my truck. The engine blew up on me that time. I think he ended up pulling it in for me. They were gonna charge over a hundred dollars, and he just hooked a chain to it and pulled me in. It worked, Anderson got the job done. It was now. a little sketchy. It's a pretty scary yeah, to being pulled by a chain. I'm from Kentucky. I don't know. I don't even know if that's legal. I don't know. But we took back roads, so I'm assuming it's probably not. But you've got to really uh, be careful because when he pushes your brakes, you kind of got to maintain tension on the chain. But at, And then I had my trailer behind me, too, a trailer with a mower on it. And so he was pulling me and uh, my truck and my trailer. My truck's a big truck. It actually was heavier than his. He had an F-150 with a 4.6 in it, which I, I believe is a pretty good engine. That's the one that mine had in it. And I uh, really enjoyed that engine. Really enjoyed that truck a lot. That's something I love is a good pickup truck. And I and, and it don't have to be a new one. I've never had a very... I don't think I've ever had over a 2008 even to this point. I really... A lot of the new vehicles, I believe they're... It's like they make them hard to work on intentionally. I believe that it's intentional. It's all part of the plan to, to where you have to bring them to the dealership and stuff. Now, my truck, I can really do anything I want to. But I can, anything tears up on that truck, I, I'm confident I can fix it. I mean, I've done the engine. I've done the rear end. With help, I did the engine, but he pretty much coached me through it and let me remove an engine and then put it in, and he, he helped along the way, but he, he pretty much let me do it. 
the rear end i've done that um just now did the transfer case done wheel bearings brakes shocks uh ball joints tie rods all that stuff the suspension stuff so the only thing i haven't done really major i guess i would say major i've never had to mess with the clutch on it my truck's a standard six speed and then I've never had to do anything with the transmission, but transmission is something I will have to do in the future because my sixth gear already doesn't really work. My truck's a six speed and it'll go into fifth gear, but it won't go into six, it just grinds. It's like the gears are stripped out. So uh, that's something I intend to get in the future. And I'll, I'll plan to make a video on that as well. I'm not a mechanic, I just, any skill that I can learn that is handy, I want to learn. I don't care what it is, if it's carpentry, if I can, that's a handy skill to me for a man. And I think in the old days, uh, men were a lot more handy than they are nowadays. They they knew a lot. Of, uh, if I feel like men knew a lot of different skills. They had a they had a much bigger skill set than they do now. A wider range of skills, I guess you could say. And uh, as far as like construction goes, yeah, I want to learn as much as I can about it. Concrete, roofing. I haven't done really any concrete a whole lot, but I've done I've done roofing. Uh, I worked in tobacco. I've, I've done a lot of factory work. Uh, I was a sheet metal worker for a while in the union, and so I've welded and stuff like that and put up metal walls and things of that nature. Worked with metal. Um, that was when I was 19 years old. I was in the union, a sheet metal worker. And, and part of why I didn't stay in is just... Uh, I knew I would always be away from home, or a lot of the times, anyways. We would stay in condos, or, or we stayed in a condo when I, when I, the whole time I was there, and I was just never home hardly. I, I could come home every now and then on the weekends, but even then, we got, I think, like a day off or something. So we worked six days a week, if I'm not mistaken. We got Sunday off. When I first started, we was working seven days a week, and that didn't last too long. It lasted maybe three weeks to a month. And but just being away from home in a city that I wasn't used to, I just and not seeing any of my family or anything, and I just really hated that. And, I, and at the time, I didn't have kids or a wife. I was 19 years old. I'm 30 now, so. Um. Well, let's kind of examine this. But uh, I I knew I wanted kids in the future and a family, so it's something that I knew and I knew in my mind I didn't. Sometimes I'm just long term. It's not something I wanted to do. But but my uncle helped me out with that a whole lot. I mean, he's, he came and got me and really presented me with an opportunity is what he did. I was a young man who was didn't really have anything at the time, and he, he came and gave me an opportunity and, and helped me a whole lot, went out of his way to help me, bought me clothes, and taught me responsibility too, though. He told me, he said, you're going to pay me back for those when you get your check, and I did. And uh, I remember me and uh, the uncle that I'm mentioning who was the foreman, by the way, of that sheet metal, uh, the certain group that we were in in that sheet metal company. He was the foreman. And uh, his son, my cousin, he ended up uh, joining too. And so we all stayed in that condo. It was me, my uncle, my cousin, and another older man named Bob who had been there for a long time. And uh, it's, it's, there's some good memories. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of just starting out as a man and uh i mean i had worked in a factory before that when i was 18 but uh when i was 19 i ended up getting that job with them and i remember we would af after work every night we worked second shift so we would get off early in the morning and uh we would go to walmart and we would all i can't remember if my uncle picked it out if we agreed on what it was uh, but he would usually cook he's a very good cook he's 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 cajun if i'm not mistaken he's from louisiana He's a Cajun man, and uh, he's helped me out a whole lot over the years too. He really has. When I've when I've uh, gotten a hard place or something, or needed help or something, he's came to help me. And I really appreciate that. He's one of them kind of people that he don't care to help you as long as he sees you want to help yourself. And I feel the same way about that. I've tried to help people before, who uh, you can tell you can help them out of a situation again and again and again, and they'll be right back in that same situation because they choose to be. They choose to go back to it. And that right there, I don't really have a whole lot of patience for that. And I mean, I've tried it, don't get me wrong, I've tried it many times and I've learned the hard way. Those kind of people, until they want help, you can't help them. You can't, you can't make their minds up for them. 
I've tried. I've tried hard to talk to people. I've tried hard to help people. And uh, and really now that kind of thing, it just irritates me and people because really what it is is it's laziness. It's a laziness in men or women, whoever it is. It's just a laziness. It's a choice. You know, they're choosing to be that way. They're choosing to not work or they're choosing to go back to drugs or choosing to go back to alcohol or choosing to go back to these things. They don't. We all have free will. And so I've been there before to where I chose to go back to them things, and there was nobody's fault but my own. I couldn't blame nobody else. When I got in those bad positions I got in, it was my fault. I earned it. That was my earning for what I did. So I like to help people that want help. And honestly, it's, it's, there, are, there are a lot of people out there who, who are in bad positions, or some anyways, that, that really want help. But then, as right. I said, I've met probably even more that no, don't want that. That don't want to help themselves. Who so are in a place to where a uh, bad position that they put themselves in and they've been there many times, time and time again. But then when they get the opportunity to get out of that, that they do it again and again and again and go right back to it. And somebody like that you just can't help. They have to they have to help themselves. They have to be willing to help themselves. They have to be willing to change. I had to be willing to change. When I was drinking alcohol all the time, it took me. People could have tried all they wanted to. If I wouldn't have made my mind up to quit drinking and to quit all the crazy stuff that was going on in my life. I remember one time uh, waking up the, uh, with knots all over my head and, and a big gas. I still have the scar on my chin from it today. And uh, I guess it's three guys that beat me up. I was drunk. The next day I, ta I talked to one of them on the phone who was supposed to be a friend to me. And he was one of them that beat me up, him and two other guys. And I... And uh, I, I don't even remember it happening. But uh, the next day, I mean, I had knots all over my head. I mean, there's no telling how bad they beat me up, really. I don't even remember. I just remember waking up on the floor there. And went, I went and talked to him after it happened. I remember that vaguely. And uh, didn't even know they had hit me the first time. And I told him I was going to head on home and, and drunk as can be and drove to a completely other city. And I'm, and I'm not proud to admit this stuff. It's a, it's a shame and a disgrace is what it is. There's it's nothing less. I could have went out that night and killed somebody, an innocent uh, little child or a whole family. And I remember being on the interstate vaguely. It's like I was going in and out. And I remember that line on the side of the road just kind of waking me up and bringing me to. And somehow I made it to where I was going. But uh, that's just a horrible lifestyle. But people that are in that kind of life, too, they've got to choose to get out of it. They have to choose to, to quit the things they're doing. I had to choose. I had to make a choice. And if I wouldn't have made a choice, I would have probably ended up dead, honestly. The way I was living, I would probably have ended up dead. Now that I have my kids, it motivates me even more. It makes me... It's a shame, really, when I'm not living the way I need to be be, to, to be an example to my children because... Uh, telling your children not to do this or not to do that, and then they see you doing it. That don't really, uh, I've experienced that with my parents. I love my mom and dad. I ain't trying to talk about them. I love them. But I've experienced it that uh, I grew up with my dad when I was a little boy. My mom and dad divorced when I was probably two years old or something. And I lived with my, my, my mom for a little bit. It's kind of back and forth. But I lived with my dad uh, as I got older. I lived with him more full-time and my brother my little brother lived with my mom me and my brother are a year and two months apart so i'm 30 right now he's 29 i'll be 31 in february he'll be 30 in april and so he lived with my mom a lot of his life i live with my dad more and uh I, re I really don't like that you know i don't that's not something i'll ever want for my family I, I don't ever want my family to be split split apart ever ever That'd be to me. That'd be one of the worst things that could possibly happen is to not get to come home to my kids every night and only see them here and there. That's just something that I never, ever, ever want to happen. Very thankful uh, for my wife and children, and for all that we have. And I know I've said that before, but I don't think you could you could say it enough, really. All right, that put us right around a truckload. That's what I was thinking we would get from it. So pretty. Satisfied with that. We're gonna get more, of course. I'm gonna try to fill it up about the load that I normally get. But so I'm gonna buck up a little bit more, split it, and load it up. I really didn't take too long. Not out of breath. Feel good today. Today feels 
Too warm for this hoodie. <laughs> then take it off. I'm advertising, boy. Hey, take it off. Right. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and uh, buck some more of this up, probably. All right, Cardi, give a tour of your little place here. Okay, I have this thing right here. I use it to hold my shirt up here, my water right here. Okay, this place waterproof? No, of course What's the point? <laughs> I was gonna pull it more. You just got a little pergola going then. Look, I gotta pull it more. A little shady sitting area. Pull up bar, huh? I know how, is that what's holding the pull up bar up? What? That thing there? Yeah. It looks rotten. Look. Yeah, I don't know that I'd trust that. This particular man here I've delivered to for years. I think I said that earlier. But, uh, and this is actually the second load I brought him this year. That that you see stacked there uh, behind me, not what I'm stacking, but the stack behind it is slab wood that his son brought him. I think he said that's $15 a load, which I thought wasn't too bad, really. I guess that's, you know, the slabs they have left from a sawmill or whatever, and they, they get rid of it. They want to get it out of their way. And so I, you get a whole truckload of it for $15, if I'm not mistaken. So I didn't think that was too bad of a deal. What am I doing here? I don't. I didn't realize I even kept that part in the video. I just I don't know what I was doing. Oh, there was a hornet there, yeah. One of those huge ones. I remember that now, huge. I've, all, I've always, ever since my papa told me about how bad the pain was from one of those, I've always uh, been afraid to get stung by one of those. I've been stung probably by just about every bee around here except for them, bee and wasp, except for those, and they're the worst, if I'm not mistaken. They're huge. They look like they're probably an inch and a half long, golden colored. And there was one flying around the truck. That's what I was doing there. I was waiting for it to go away, and finally it did. I don't know if it was down in that wood pile or what, but... Anyways, this he this man's pretty stocked on wood now. He asked me to send him a link to the channel as well, so I intend to do that. He's a very friendly guy. I've done quite a bit of work for him. For him. There's a lot of uh, landscaping jobs and things like that, and brush removal, tree removals, mulch insulation, things like that. I wish I would have recorded. Over the years, I've done so many different jobs that I, I, it would have been great footage to record, but uh, this year is when I really just thought about doing it again, and Started it, started it out, and yeah, here I am now. About uh, it's been a little over two months, if I'm not mistaken, that since I've been doing this YouTube channel, and it's it's very it's very interesting. I enjoy it. It takes a lot of time. I mean, really, when I'm there doing the work, that's not that doesn't take too much time. Really, recording that doesn't really take that much time. What takes so long is the editing. I mean, the editing takes hours. I'm right now. I'm still still uh editing i'm i'm doing the audio obviously you hear me talking so i'm doing the audio here it it takes hours you working or what no is it okay if i record it uh, yeah i don't care no me and carter started a little youtube channel thing oh okay you make we ended up talking for quite a while probably a good 20 minutes or so he had some more work that he's wanting me to do as well and that's what he was telling me about there but uh this video is almost over my phone ended up dying on me I appreciate everybody that's watching, and God bless you.